JFK, John F. Kennedy, had a great impact on the American populace. His youth, his vigor, his media savvy, his family image, his children, his wife, especially, his New Frontier campaign slogan, the space race, the civil rights that he finally got into, um, paving the way for the Civil Rights Act of 1964. But of course, his martyrdom, you might say, is the symbol of his death. And through that, the, the continuing influence, even a sort of a fascination about the circumstances and the tragic uh, legacy which has inspired generations of Americans. But even more in some ways, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, my, my, my mother had a, a palpable uh, piece that she received listening to his radio addresses, the so-called fireside chats during the Great Depression and World War II, the comfort and the hope in the face of the Depression and its despair, un unemployment, poverty, uncertainty, the New Deal, the explaining in a very warm human way uh, all these things that would bring hope to people and uh, shift the national worldview from despair to hope. And we know that the, unif the, the, the nation was unified, the public was prepared for war, the morale was lifted, and there was an impact from this person, this kindly and in many ways, warm, personal Franklin Del Delano Roosevelt with his skill as a communicator and his unwavering uh, hope and optimism. But more than these two, when you talk about the impact of a person, we have to look at Moshiach ben Dovid, the person, and we find out that eternal life is eternal fellowship with a person who is eternal life. And in First Johannan, it says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we've looked at, we've gazed at, upon and our hands have touched this we proclaim the word of eternal life that was with the father and has appeared to us so we see that eternal life is a person and it's not just eternal existence, but it's eternal fellowship with a person. Just as, in a sense, through the media, Americans felt a certain fellowship with JFK and FDR. And this is modeled for you this word of life, this light of life, this bread of life, 
in Galatians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. The most important witness of the resurrection, the Shaliach, Paulos, the emissary. Where is he? He's in Jerusalem. For how many days? 15 days. Who is he visiting? Kepa, the first preacher of the Masura Sage Ola on Shavuos in the Ulam Shlomo in the base of Mikdash, standing with the 11, with the slot vacated by Judas Iscariot already filled. And not only Kipa, but Rav Shaul is with Yaakov ben Dovid. And both of these men were unbelievers before they encountered eternal life in the person of the resurrected Messiah. And that's why Rav Shaul says, to me, to live is Messiah. This, this is it. This is life. This is eternal life. As I fellowship with him now, and I can do all things through the Moshiach who strengthens me, so I will have fellowship with him in eternity. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And you know, it's impossible to speak about Paul as if he didn't exist because we know all of his associates. We know about Barnabas and Silvanus or Silas and Timothy and Apollos and Titus and Kepa and Yaakov. And um, we know about not just Timothy and Titus, but Philemon and Phoebe and uh, Lucius, Jason, Sisipiter, uh Herodian, the ones he addresses at the end of Romans, and also the ones that we hear about in the book of Acts. These are his, his partners, uh, his associates. Uh, at one point, you have all these authors of Scripture in the same room while Colossians and uh, Philemon are being dictated, those two, uh, Igrot Kodesh. Uh, you have um, not just Titus and so Silas or Silvanus, but uh, you have... Uh, Epaphroditus and uh, Archippus and Aristarchus and Epaphras and Andronicus and Junia and uh, Tychicus. And the list goes on and on and on. A vast uh, camaraderie. Timothy, Lucius, Jason, Sisipiter, Tertius, the, the scribe that took, that took down the book of Romans, Gaius, Erastus, Quartus. He's talking about the, his hosts and the people that gave him uh, a place to stay and also hosted the congregation. So the historicity of Rav Shaul is undeniable. And his testimony of what he saw on the Damascus Road is, is undeniable. And of course, there was some letdown among some of these people, but not many of them. Apparently, Demas was in love with the world. 
deserted him, was uh, lacking in real commitment. Possibly he was afraid, running for his life, or discouraged with the hardships and the persecution that Rav Shaul was going through. Maybe he thought he would be next. Uh, this uh, letdown had an impact on Rav Shaul, of course, because for the most part, uh, for the most part, his associates did not let him down like that. But they helped him accomplish what he accomplished, was which was a great accomplishment. Uh, he says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, inwardly, we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And this unseen presence that was with him materialized on the Damascus Road and also at other key points in his ministry, which you can read about in the book of Acts. The eternal life that was with the Atik Yomim the Zunfunder Eibishter, the Bar Enosh, eternal life with God, who came that we might have eternal life. And he who has him has eternal life. We're talking about a personal relationship. We're not talking about a theological philosophy. He who does not have him will not see life. We're talking about the Logutis Zois, the Devar Chachayim. We're talking about the one who is Adonainu, Moshienu, Rabbeinu, Ribi Melek Hamoshiach, the one who is life, the bread of life, the light of life, the eternal life that was with the Father. Eternal life is a person. And eternal life is eternal fellowship with a person. And if you are discouraged right now, you need to get acquainted not with JFK, not with FDR, not with some Hollywood star or some person in the movies or in the media or some celebrity, you need to get acquainted with the one who is the word of life, the light of life, the bread of life, eternal life, Moshiach ben Dovid. And I thank God. It says in Yohanan, have you been with me so long and still you don't know me, Philip? And I didn't know him. I was raised in a congregation and spent 18 years hearing about him. But he was not really anyone I was familiar with. Sometimes in college, 
when somebody would speak against him, I would uphold him. But I'm afraid for me, he was just a nice dead prophet and a sentimental memory from my childhood religious education. But when I was 28 years old, he revealed himself in me and I became born from heaven and I entered into a fellowship with him. And this is eternal life, to know him. It says that they may know you, the only true God, and Yeshua Mashiach, whom you have sent. That is eternal life. You say, oh, I know about God, and I know about him. We're talking about a quality of life, freedom from sin, holiness, kadusha, a relationship with God. This, in contrast to spiritual death, which results from a life of sin that ends in death. He who believes in me has kaye olam, Yohanan chapter 6, verse 47. In him was life, we're talking about eternal life, and the life, the eternal life, was the light of men. And that's what we're trying to, to speak about tonight. And Lord, I'm asking you to help us to know him, to be introduced to him, to find him in the scriptures, to look for him in the scriptures, and to walk with him in the scriptures and to bring others into a fellowship with him in the scriptures. Today I was sitting at a bus stop and an elderly man sat down next to me and I reached over to him and I said, you know, he's all we have. There's only the cemetery and him. You know that. When I'm in the elevator, I will say sometimes, he's the only up elevator. All the other elevators are down elevators. I'm trying to stutter and say something about him. I believe that the millennials, in their focus on their friends, their friends, their friends, they're all important friends. What has made billions of dollars for the inventor of Facebook, this, this focus on friends. I believe that deep down in their empty hearts, the millennials know that the life that they have is so empty. Without their friends, there's only the cemetery. But we know one who walked out of the cemetery. He is eternal life. And to know him is to have eternal life. And this is the fellowship that we have in him. Even eternal life. And Lord, I want to thank you that we can live even in this dying world with eternal life as our friend. He is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. A friend loves at all times. And this friend will meet us on the other side. And if we're caught up with him now, if we walk with him today, 
when the time comes and we are called home, the transition will not be difficult because we already know the Prince of Life who will meet us and take us from the Olam Hazer to the Olam Haba. Moshiach Ben Dovid, I thank you that you're not moldering in old Montefiore Cemetery. I thank you that you chose the biggest and the most tireless Jews for Judaism adversary and persecutor to reveal yourself to him as an unlikely witness of the resurrection. I would go further and say an unimpeachable witness of the resurrection. There's no way to deny the change that happened in Rav Shaul. There's no way to say Rav Shaul was not a historical figure. There's no way to minimize his testimony. There's no way to call it into question or speak of it as a mere hallucination or even a lie. We know that this man was changed. He not only met eternal life, he was completely changed and recreated. As David said, Bara in me a lev hadash, a ruach hadasha, kind of um, sort of fusing David and Ezekiel here. He wa he is a creationary miracle, a new creature. The old enemy of the believers is gone. The snarling, uh, hateful persecutor is gone. Behold, a new person exists. If you get a chance, go to YouTube and watch the video, The Rabbi from Tarsus, the complete movie. I can't say all that's in that YouTube video, but I'm saying this. Eternal life is a person. I'm, in I'm trying to introduce you to a person. If you meet this person, you will not only meet a person, but you will have Chaye Olam, an, an eternal, holy life with God. Moshiach Ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. And everybody said, Amen.